Good afternoon. I'm Richard Zellin, Director of Strategic Philanthropy for American Friends of Magain Davida Dom's Midwest region. Ordinarily, I would say it's good to be with you today, but these are very troubling times, tragic circumstances that bring us together. A war, and ceaseless rocket attacks that have cost Israeli lives and have injured hundreds. As supporters of an EMS organization, we're of course saddened by the loss of life anywhere, especially when it involves in the innocent civilians. In the end, of course, it's Hamas that's at the center of this, that's targeting civilians and has utterly wreaked havoc in Israel, where 12 people have died from rocket attacks, others from injuries sustained while running to shelters, and still others from the sectarian riots that have broke out throughout Israel. With us here late this afternoon to bring us up to date on what's happening in Israel and how Magain David Adam is responding is my good friend and colleague, Yoni Yadovsky, Director of International Relations for MADA. We'll begin with some questions I have for Yoni, and then we'll open it up to the audience who can ask their questions by typing into the Q&A panel on Zoom. Thanks for joining us, Yoni, especially at this very late hour um, in Israel. Thank you for having me. So I guess the first question is, um, MADA has ongoing consultations with Israeli security agencies, intelligence, and so on. And so everyone's wondering on the call, how long is this going to last? Um, what do you expect the current kind conflict to cease? Um, there's talk in the United States that um, there's real pressure to have a ceasefire. I mean, what are your thoughts on the ground there? And uh, what, what sort of scenarios are, are being discussed in terms of how this might, this might play out? Well, I think I, I can go from, from the end to the, to the beginning. The, the feeling these, if this not tonight in Israel, and it's been going on the entire day that we are, there is a fair chance that there will be some kind of a ceasefire within the next 24 hours. It doesn't mean that it will happen. Uh, due to the, the way that uh, our neighbors are conducting and so on. But anyhow, the last 24 hours from our experience are the most dangerous ones because we know from previous times that uh, our the Hamas or, or will do its best to, you know, and up until the last minute and maybe beyond that, to try and get additional achievements. And their achievements is causing more destruction in Israel and, and more fatalities. This is what they are aiming to do. So therefore, Magen David Adom uh, is on a very high alert, meaning our eyes and ears are open. Because again, as I said, uh, from past experience, the last hours, even the last minutes, and the minutes and hours shortly after the time that was decided that uh, from now on it's a ceasefire, there was there were always uh, issues, hostility, missiles, motor shells, and uh, unfortunately, people were injured, and and even got killed. So um, we don't know where it will go. Where each side would like to be on the upper side and to say that they will have their own, uh, you know, uh, victory picture or something as, as the commentaries are, are saying. But um, I'm sure that the common Israelis 
especially the people who live uh, the the Western Negev, in, they live in Ashkelon, in Ashdod, in, in the areas that were constantly targeted over the last 10 days, uh, on one hand, want that there will be a permanent solution to this ongoing situation. But on the other hand, are beginning to feel a little bit tired from the fact that they have to live with their kids in the bomb shelters or, or to be all the time in constant fear and to even when they go out to, to buy a few groceries uh, uh, nearby or if they take a shower and they hope that the red alert siren will not be heard while they are either outside shopping or indoors and not free to get into the bomb shelter within 15 to 30 seconds. Yoni, um, this has been very stressful for not only the people involved, especially in the border communities, but for uh, MADA EMTs and paramedics. I mean, you barely have come off of COVID where MDA played a central and leading role and you were at it day and night, and now you're at it again, working 24-7. How is the staff holding up? I think that we, we are fortunate. We are fortunate because um, all our team members, the, the volunteers particularly, but also the employees, understand that they have a significant role, role in the daily life of each and every Israeli. And once you know that you are needed and you are a professional and that you, everything that you do or do or maybe not do can affect the life of another person that usually is your neighbor or the person who lives in your own community, your own neighborhood, your own city might be jeopardized if you will not be on alert gives on the one side a lot of responsibility, but on the other side, the way to, when you're being called out, you know that you are being called out to fulfill your task. And this is extremely rewarding. And no doubt, as you said, you know, 2020 wasn't a great year, not only for us, for the entire world with, with the COVID-19, it changed our life completely. It changed our whereabouts. It changed our perspective. It changed the way that we work, the way we conduct, etc. And we, there was a lot of burden, daily burden, on the work of our volunteers and employees because we were at the front, forefront of dealing with COVID here in Israel before the vaccinations and then after the vaccinations, and including that. And Israel over the last few months is uh, an an excellent situation COVID-wise. Uh, Israel opened up to sports, to culture, to schools, to working places. Even the notorious traffic jams have came back to us and uh, we have a reason to complain all the time about the traffic, etc. But now all over, all over again, with this 10 days of conflict, everything changed again. And we are being called again to assist everyone in need all over the country. And I think one of the great examples is the fact that every day we send teams from the central stations in Israel and, and, and kind of uh, semi-northern stations, volunteers who go south for 12 or four, 24 hours to reinforce the stations in Ashkelon, Ashdod, Sderot, Netivot, Beersheba, etc., And the, the demand is way, way beyond the actual need. So, and that gives us the, the perspective to know that we are on the safe side in the terms of the determination and the willing and the drive of our volunteers and employees. Have any... Um... Modest staff been injured by the violence, either internally or from the rocket attacks coming from Gaza? Not directly. 
but unfortunately, indirectly, yes. Um, there was a direct hit uh, last week on uh, several, uh, the, the parking area of seven pri private houses just next to Lod, not far from Ramula, where we build the, the new blood services center. And this rocket uh, killed the father and his 16-year-old uh, daughter. It's the family of Yusuf, who is the director of the uh, Magenda Vida Dom Lod station. And he, who, and he lives in that area, in the same compound. It's a kind of a family compound next, next to Lod. So indirectly, it did affect Mada because he is one of the flesh and blood of the organization. It's an Israeli our Bedouin family that lives next to Lod. And uh, we, we feel that pain very deeply. Speaking of Ramla and the violence there and the external violence, has the, has the situation had an impact on the construction of the new blood center? No, it hasn't. Not at all. The only thing that affected it partly was the fact that uh, last week and the, over the weekend, there were two holidays, one next to the other. It was Eid al-Adha, which is the, la the, the last holiday days of uh, the end of the Ramadan. So some of the construction workers didn't arrive and we had our own uh, Shavuot holiday over the weekend. So there was not a lot of work conducted. In add to that, the fact that the clashes were on and rockets were fired all over the place, including to the area of Ramle, Lod, Modi'in, the airport, etc., Tel Aviv, Ramat Gan, etc. So there was much less work that took place. But uh, according to what we see within the next few few days, the work will regain again and, and we'll go back to the normal pace once we'll have the uh, uh, most of the employees in and the systems up and going. That's great news. Thanks, Yoni. Um, another question related to MADA um, in terms of the current situation, has any equipment, um, ambulances been impacted, um, affected by either the internal violence or the rockets coming over um, from Gaza? So uh, in terms of, of the city from Gaza, uh, there were no damages to, to Magen David Adom. Uh, unfortunately, because of the riots in the uh, cities like uh, Akko, Nazareth, Lod, uh, uh, Ramle and others, we had a few cases or in Um el a few cases that there were uh, what you call damages, body damages to some of our ambulances. Windows uh, were broken. Uh, uh, we had to fix several ambulances. Um, I think that the main issue is, uh, is first that we had to take out a few ambulances in order to make sure that we can repair them and bring them back to work and that reduces our abilities in each and in these areas. But we were able to move around a variety of vehicles uh, as part of the known system that we have. So there was no lack even in, in that given hour or so. But the other thing is the fact that uh, you know very well that Magen David Adom team members are the mirror of the Israeli society. And we have uh, uh, Jews from all sides, meaning secular, ultra-Orthodox, kibbutzniks, moshevnik, etc., with the vast, vast variety of, of, of your own also political uh, uh, agendas, and, on, and also uh, Muslims and Christians and Druze that are all working together. We have stations in, in Arabic uh, uh, communities and cities People work together, people live together in Magadavidodom. By the way, also in the hospitals and in many other places. 
And that created some kind of attention that we very quickly noticed and we have uplifted this thing with very clear messages that we had uh, presented in Magenda Vida Dome that we provide services to anyone, by anyone. And this is our mission, this is our goal, and we will not let any conflict get into and interfere with our mission. And it worked very well, and we heard very clear voices from everyone in Magenda Vida Dome that enough is enough, and it will not get into MADA. And again, we saw it so clearly in LOD, where the entire members of the MADA LOD station, employees and volunteers from all parties of the Israeli society, went to Yusuf's homes when they were sitting three days uh, uh, mourning the loss of their family members, being with them, supporting them. There was even a very emotional uh, TV coverage that we have circulated, showing the inner strength and comradeship of the team members in Magenda Vida Dome. Has there been special sessions that you've held with staff to try to keep the tension down between different sectors of uh, Israeli society? Yes, it's part of our routine, especially in emergency situation like we are facing now. But you should always remember, it seems like it's been a long, long time ago, but it was just at the last day of April, beginning of May. We had a horrible incident in Meron. 45 people got killed that were celebrating in Meron, at the, 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 the tomb of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And Magen David Adon people were there. Most of the people, or many of the other people that were there came also, not only to provide medical backup, but also to, to participate. It's a, it's, a, it's a great festival. And so we had to sit with them and to speak with them. They came from all over the country and to support them because the sites were horrible. There were people that they knew because they studied together in school. They lived together in the same neighborhood. They know family members. Eventually, you know us, we, you, you meet someone and all of, within 10 minutes, you know and, and that you know a part of the family, etc. The same there. And it gave us a, a, a lot. We, we invested a lot of work with professionals to support the spirit of our people, to make sure that everybody is safe and people who has kind of uh, stress symptoms even were able to receive more professional assistance in order to keep them going. And eventually we saw it a, a week and a half later when this escalation happened and opened up against us last uh, Monday, a week ago. It's truly, truly extraordinary the effort that Mata made to uh, save lives in that situation. Had it not been right there on the ground, I, it's clear that there would have been more um, lives lost. I want to turn back again to the current situation and have a number of uh, questions for you and how this compares to the last um, so-called war with Hamas in 2014 and how it's similar or different. And one area is what are, what are your EMTs, what are MADA M, uh, uh, EMTs and paramedics seeing in the field? Is it similar to what they saw um, back in 2014? Are there differences? I mean, some people say that the missiles are more precise um, that they're able to launch them more frequently. Um, what are you guys hearing and seeing on the ground? Well, no doubt that the number of missiles that are sent each time is much bigger, and much more than they used to fire uh, six, seven years ago. Uh, they're trying to, you know, uh, <clears throat> test the abilities of the Iron Dome. 
uh, and uh, it causes uh, damages. We see that some of the rockets are, let's say, escaping this uh, fantastic system and causing damages. Uh, in terms of response, Magen David Adom is an organization that learns from each and every event. This is engraved. It is something that is, let's say, in the genes of the organization. And uh, we share the experience and the knowledge all the time between ourselves. And even with the newcomers, they have to learn and understand the new concepts that they, we are supposed to deal with. Uh, one of the things that we have decided to do that the level of deployment all over the stations will be maximum, meaning we man all of our vehicles, all of them. The ambulances, the mobile intensive care units, the command vehicles, the medicycles, they are all manned and are spread all over the country. Therefore, anywhere in the country, we will be there within a couple of minutes because we get the word of the siren and the direction before the general public knows about it. We have a few more seconds to prepare ourselves because we are connected to the national warning system. And then since people know every corner of the street everywhere, we can get there very quickly. We have the systems of scanning the buildings, making we scan each building that is damaged partly or fully from top to bottom. We make sure that nobody is left inside their home. And that's one of the times that we understood that we have a tragedy, for example, in Ramat Gan, because in the ground floor, there was a guy that didn't open up. And with the help of the fire department and the police, we broke into this, his apartment and unfortunately found him in a un, uh, uh, dead. And uh, even if the team tried to revive him, he, he didn't uh, make it, unfortunately. We know how to protect ourselves. We know how to respond. But in overall, it's the same game. These are missiles and mortar shells, uh, some with a bigger amount of explosives that are being sent to harm Israeli civilians and to try to cause damages to Israeli infrastructure. And so we are very well prepared. And I think that American friends of Magen David Adom and your donors have a significant role in the fact that we are prepared. We have the technologies, we have the ambulances, we have the equipment, we have the experience because we, we've been supported for so many years. It's not that all of a sudden we have a 1,300 ambulances up and running because uh, a week ago we received all of them. No, it's a constant struggle that we are doing and, and we are receiving fantastic support. And that what keeps us going and this what makes us ready. It happened during COVID, it happened in Meron, and it happens now. That's great. So mm -hmm. we are extremely grateful. Could you, could, picking up on that, could you say a little bit more about the technological aspect of it? Because that was one of the key features of those response to COVID. I mean, the, the ability to do what you did in terms of call taking, testing, transporting people, a lot of it had to do with the technology that's been developed over the years, really first rate. And so if you can comment on that and what role it's played in the most- Well, um, our system, the, the command control system of Magen David Dome that was being developed for many, many years in-house in Magen David Dome has a lot of a variety of uh, levels, let's say. It is very easy for our system to detect the caller uh, uh, location. 
with a variety of means. If they use and they call us through the MIMA, the app, we automatically see where they're calling from. We only need to verify it. But if they call from a landline or a cell phone, by clicking or, and approving a text message that we sent to them, we know where they exactly are. We can get video, live videos from the scene. So if somebody calls us and they said, yeah, the rocket fell here, and we ask them why they're on the phone, open the camera and show us what's going on, the teams on the way already see what they're getting into. They see the damage, they see the extent of the damage, they see if, if there are more additional buildings or cars, et cetera, that are being damaged while they're on the way. And at the command center, we see the vehicle driving to the scene with the dashboard cameras. So back at the headquarters, at the command centers, at the dispatching centers, the people who sit there, the EMTs and paramedics and, and decision makers, see where our teams are going. They see live what's going on. Then we see the patients. They can get automatic consultation from senior paramedics and from doctors. We can send the data to the hospital so they know in advance what type of injuries they are going to receive. They see it visually, not only verbally. And this is how we utilize the, the technologies that we are developing in any given time. Even when we talk about cardiac patients or respiratory issues or strokes or car accident and in rocket attacks. Truly amazing, really extraordinary. Um, we're, we're not out of the woods yet. As you said earlier on, um, there may or may not be a ceasefire in the next 24 hours. Um, but many people talk about this is just the beginning in some ways, that there are other dangers that lie ahead beyond Hamas in the northern border from Hezbollah. Uh, we, we received the reminder earlier today, uh, there were four rockets fired from Lebanon towards Israel. Uh, two fell in the Mediterranean, one was intercepted, and the fourth one uh, hit uh, a soccer field in Shfar'a, which is an Israeli Arab community not far from Haifa. And it's not the first time over the last few days that uh, as if uh, there is some kind of solidarity uh, uh, gestures from Lebanon. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, the Israeli army intercepted a drone that uh, began a journey somewhere uh, in Syria and uh, flew above the, Israel, uh, the Syrian Jordanian border trying to penetrate to Israel and it was intercepted. It is uh, relatively, according at least to, to what I hear in the media, that this drone was not sent by, directly by uh, the Syrian regime, but more of the uh, Iranian proxies. Um, so yes, unfortunately, we do live in a kind of a unpleasant neighborhood at this time of the year. And uh, we do have some uh, issues with the neighbors, domestic issues, uh, and it is troubling. And I think that the most troubling part now is the clashes within Israel that presents a lot of issues, social issues, political issues that the Israeli society will have to resolve. Uh, otherwise, we, it, it will not get better. What can, what can uh, American Jews do and friends in the Christian community do to help out? Continue to do what you're doing for so many years, but uh, make another effort because uh, the needs are growing. As, as you heard, uh, if you will, let's say I live in Jerusalem and if you will be moving today in Jerusalem, 
you will see a city that is uh, functioning, working, people are traveling, going to work, uh, such as schools are closed, but the rest is uh, pretty fu- much functioning. But if you will be in Tel Aviv, you will see that Tel Aviv is completely not the same. You don't have the vibe that Tel Aviv offers. Things are pretty closed in the evenings. People are not feeling safe. And therefore, we have to be there and we provide a lot of the safety and the feeling of reassurance to the Israeli people. Because every Israeli know, no matter where they live, no matter whether they're Jewish or Arabs, that once they dial 101, we will be there. And we will be there using the ambulances that you have donated, utilizing the medical supplies that you have donated, making sure that if they go to the hospital and they need blood, they will get the blood from the existing blood services center that you have donated. And in the future from the new one that we are, you are now building for the state of Israel. So there is a direct involvement every minute, every day from our fantastic supporters in America. And we need your help. We are not funded by the government and we need the help in order to be as successful as we are now, facing a future that we are not so aware of and to be able to continue and provide the necessary services to a growing Israeli community. And so we definitely need your continuous support. Anyone who has questions, please put it in the chat on the Zoom. Um, are there specific, is there specific um, pieces of equipment besides, besides ambulances that are especially needed now? First, we need uh, additional protect, personal protective gear, helmets, flag jackets. Uh, we need to t- make sure that the patients that we are taking is also protected. It's not only our team members that needs to wear a flag jacket and a helmet, because there are areas that we need to cover, make sure that the patient inside the ambulance is well protected. So this is another need. We need the medical supplies. We need the testing kits for the blood services and the blood bags. We need additional support in order to develop our technologies because it has been proven to us that all the investments that were placed in the past into our technology system is paying back fantastically and is really pushing us forward. Any support that you can give us will be channeled to our needs, big ones and small ones, even a bandage, even gloves. And by the way, gloves are becoming kind of a diamond in the world because they so the high demand due to COVID for gloves. And we are fighting in order to get sufficient support of gloves, for example. And nobody's paying really much attention to it, but you know, it's clear that medical professionals are wearing gloves, but supplies are not so easy. Anything that you can assist us with will be channeled to treating patients the best way we can. One final call for questions in the panel. If if not, um, we're gonna wrap things up here. Uh, First and foremost, Yoni, Thank you again for taking time at this incredibly late hour in Israel to be with us. Um, And equally important, thank you for all the work that you do and all the colleagues of yours at MDA are doing every day, and especially now under such difficult and dangerous and challenging circumstances to treat and save lives. Um, For those of you who are on the call who would like to make a donation and support the amazing work of Magain David Adam, you can give uh, through our online. It's afmda.org. 
um, again, afmda.org. And thank you for joining us again and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.